Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Can you read that? And there will be frolic. There will be frolic in this video and when you come on my live. And we're going to be doing the Metropolitan Division predictions. Yes, I'm going to give them to you from what our, on the live stream, we did a poll where I did a team, I sent out a team like, say, the Rangers. And they, all the people that come on my live, they put a number down as to where they finished. Then we did an average of all of that and made up our predictions for the standings of the Metropolitan Division. And then I'm after that, after I do that, I'm going to go into in-depth reasons why they were picked where they were, but I'm going to do it where I picked them where they were going to be. So I'm going to tell you why I think they're going to land where they are. And I'll talk a little bit about maybe why the community picked them as well. That's what we're going to do. And uh, you can be part of that if you go to the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show on YouTube. Just search Pearlo. See where it says there? P-E-A-R-L-O. Pearl O Wisdom. People ask me, where did you get that from? Pearl O Wisdom. It's like, if you ever remember Bucket O Fries? They used to do that if you went to a fast food place. Bucket O Fries. Well, I've given you a Pearl O Wisdom. Huh. Funny, eh? All right. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And uh, you are going to... Oh, yeah, here we go. Metropolitan Division. You ready? You're all sitting down. You got your pens out. All ready? Hit the subscribe. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all four major sports. And those in the... Uh, and uh, teams within those... Four major sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. It's not just steel. It's not just flyers. No. It's all of it. Blue Jackets, 8th. Devils, 7th. Pittsburgh Penguins, 6th. Hmm... Capitals, fifth. Washington Capitals. Flyers, fourth. New York Rangers, third. New York uh, Islanders, second. And Carolina Hurricanes, first. Tell me what you think about that in the comment section. I'm going to continue now and tell you my, show you my order and go in-depth as to the reasons why certain teams missed and certain teams are going to make it and all that fine for all. Come, come join me. We're going to do it right now. Come. Don't. Hey, don't. Yeah, come. It's fun. It'll be frolic. I promise. Okay, here we go. Ba -ba -da -da. First one. Yes, I also had the Columbus Blue Jackets in eighth place. Um, I, I did this, but I'm like, for some reason, I think things are going to work out for Columbus this year, but I can't do it. Based on the roster that is there, um, it's one of those things where I th I have a feeling at the end of the season, like halfway through the season, you're like, how the heck are they doing this again? Uh, Brad Larson, I don't know much about him, but I know uh, Kekalainen is an extremely smart general manager, and I imagine he's really good. So change of energy with Tortorella, things just went off the rails there last. Tortorella is an amazing coach, but he's an amazing coach that is going to do, it's like win or nothing with him. And he won't go any other direction. And he knows what it takes to win and he won't bend on that. He's not going to say, oh, okay, we're not going to win for a little while, so we're going to try things a little bit different. Or, you know, you we'll, we'll go get goals now while we're just going to build. And he, it's just, Tortorella is not going to do that. Not but Brad Larson is obviously must have an offensive approach because they would they got to be thinking they got to keep Patrick Lyon in here. They have to be thinking that. And if they can, and he can pot those 30, 40 goal seasons, it's going to be beautiful. Uh, they went out and got Jacob Borjak for a reason. Jacob Borjak is a sublime passer. Doesn't really, doesn't get enough credit for how good of a passer he is. 
They have Alexander Tessier here in the middle. That is interesting. I don't know if it's going to stay that way, but I like Alexander Tessier. He is a good two-way guy, and that's exactly what they need. They need a solid two-way center because Voracek and Line, they're going to make they're going to take some risks in the defensive zone to bring to make offense. And that was what Lyonnais was upset about with Tortorella. Tortorella would sit him if he did that sort of thing. So, see what happens. Nyquist, Roslovich, and Bjorkstrand. Gustav Nyquist, I'm not sure what he's going to be. He didn't play all year last year. Apparently, he's healthy now. But, man, after not playing all year, and he wasn't, like, spectacular when he was playing, really. Uh, he's been very inconsistent his whole career. A 40-point guy, 43-point guy, like he really doesn't put up a crap load of numbers at the best of times, 42 and 70 the last year he played. So, I mean, he's okay, but not something, somebody that's generally going to turn the turn the tables on a franchise or anything like that. Jack Rozlovich had a good year last year. He's going to have to do that again. And if he does, and Lion A does, man, that trade looks good, doesn't it? Uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand, he's always there for 25 goals, consistent all the time. Is stuck with Columbus for ever. Uh, it's not a bad second line, but it's not great either. I- Igor Sh- Shinnikov is already going to be playing in the lineup, it looks like. This was a guy they picked off the board in 2020 at, two th- uh, on the, at 21. Nobody saw it coming. When they picked Shinnikov, the announcers here in Canada were like, who? They didn't have a clue. They had to go to commercial so they could look up who the guy was. Like, And now he's going to play. That's what I mean about Kekalainen. Freaking brilliant general manager, especially with uh, prospects. So I'm not, I'm not counting Columbus. Even though I have them in last, something inside me thinks they're going to do a lot better than we think. Uh, Boone Jenner and Emil Benstrom. Now, I've heard the, uh, the Boone Jenner has been up here too. They've tried them both. And that could be the spot where Boone Jenner, because Boone Jenner plays fantastic two-way. You know, he's not the greatest offensive guy anymore, but he certainly can play the two-way game that lets Voracek and Lion A be a little risque. Uh, Eric Robinson, Corrali, and Foody. Good fourth line. Sean Corrali. I mean, 6'2", 213, does his fourth-line job at center, beats people up, has good wheels, uh, plays both ends of the ice, and he's from Columbus, which is nice. So you don't think, you know, that's probably a good idea if you can find some guys that live in the Columbus area so they don't fly off to other lands like Panarin and Dubois and all that. Not a bad idea. Uh, Rorensky and Bean on defense first. Uh, that would be fantastic if Jake Bean can find his spot on the first with first pairing with Rorensky after being buried in Carolina for quite some time. Um, certainly would help them, but it is two lefties, which is uh, a little bit concerning. But I'm sure Jake Bean's like, yeah, I'll play whatever side you want. Just give me minutes, man, because in Carolina he never got it. Uh, Gavrikov and Boquist, love it, love it, love it. Adam Boquist picking up for Jones. Adam Boquist, I think, give a couple of years, maybe even not that long, will be better than Jones. I thought that was a beautiful trade. Uh, very under the radar how much they brought back. Very good move by Kekalainen. And uh, Kukan and Andrew Peak. Andrew Peak finally getting his chance here, which is good. We'll see what he can do. He needed, he needed to work on his skating. Uh, and a lot of other areas, but he's got the size and could still, I hope he's gained more than that. 6'3", 194. It's, if a player in the NHL is 6'3", you want him to be about 210. So 15 pounds more, at least 210. Um, and Dean Kukan always does his job. It's a fair-sized, uh, this is a fairly big de- decor. And, uh, could cause some problems. Elvis Merzlikens, I love. He is playing this year for Kavlinkas. This is a very emotional guy. And uh, um, Kavlinkas, of course, was uh, um, passed away with a terrible incident, a firework incident. And Merzlikens is just, I guess, 
I mean, he's always been very emotional, but he's very focused this year. I have a feeling he's going to crush it for his buddy. And I'm rooting for him for sure. And then Junus Corposalo, who is not great. Uh, sounds like he's asking to be moved now that he knows that Merzlikin is going to be the number one. I don't blame him, but you got to play better, dude. I didn't play well last year at all, so you got to play better than that before they're going to move you, I think. Then you got Max Domi. Domi. Nathan Gerbe always looks, does, he's just a little jitterbug up there, and he plays hard every single minute. Um, it's not super depth. Okay, Gavin Bayreuther can play some, but I, I got to see a lot more of these uh, players first. They're very young. They're going to get their chance. And honestly, besides Tyler Sakura, who probably is not NHL caliber, I don't know all that much about these guys. Uh, Zach Ronaldo, um, if they can have him play, he's great for the room. He's an awesome room guy. But I got to see Joshua Dunn and Tyler Angle and all of those guys in regular season play before I can really say how much depth they actually have. It doesn't appear to be all that much, though, and that's part of the reason why I put him eighth. Next, now the, the community had the jackets. I had the jackets. The next one's a surprise. I got the Pittsburgh Penguins making uh, coming in. Coming in uh, seventh place. And I just had to count to make sure I had all of them there. Um I don't like this defense. Uh, I, Tristan Jari, it was so bad in the playoffs. He, maybe he comes around, I suppose. But, I mean, i got to go by what I've seen. and, and It just looks awful. Um, Rui Dill and Pedersen. I thought Pedersen was going to be a lot better than he was. I know they were trying to move him over the summer. And uh, that's not a good sign uh, for a 25-year-old defenseman when it's you're the Pittsburgh Penguins needing youth in your lineup, and you're trying to move a guy. And he was looking like he was going to be okay. They gave him a big, you know, how you, how many times have you seen it? You get the nice contract, all of a sudden players stop doing the things that got him the contract in the first place, and it goes downhill. Michael Matheson, he had a better year than he did in Florida, but did he have a good year? Not really. I mean, average at best. John Marino had a poor year. I think he'll bounce back. I think what John Marino is a difficulty here was that um, he was an offensive guy trying to transition into a more defensive type uh, defenseman. I think he'll be better this year. But with Chris Letang being 34, he puts up good offense. His defensive analytics are poor now, though. And Brian Demelin, I wouldn't have him in a one-two. So overall, I just it's a very not nice looking defense. That being said, Sullivan is a freaking brilliant coach. I over and over again, this team probably shouldn't have made the playoffs the last two years, but they do. And I think a lot of that has to go to uh, Sullivan and of course Crosby. But Crosby's not going to be in the lineup for the next little while for a couple of weeks. Um, and what do they say? Six weeks, that's quite a long time. And, of course, Malkin, unknown, at least until Christmas, I heard. So Gunsel, Carter, and Brian Rust doesn't have the same ring to it as Gunsel, Crosby, <laughs> and Brian Rust. Evan Rodriguez in the second-line center. He's just not a second-line center. I'm, he's just not. And Jason Zucker, to me, is pretty meh. Kasperi Kapanen would be riding that line. And that's not a good thing. He's not a guy that runs a line. So McGinn, Bluger, and Danton Heinen. Now, I imagine Sullivan will get the best out of Heinen that he's ever had in his career, and maybe McGinn as well. But even at that, it's still not a great-looking lineup. Aston Reese, Lafferty, and Anthony Angelo. Okay. It's okay. Like, it's my, it's okay. It's not a playoff roster, though. If this team makes the playoffs, Sullivan should finally get his Adams Award. He's got to get a Jack Adams. The guy is amazing. Uh, but anyways, I have him seventh based on the lineup. Something Again, almost like Columbus, 
probably you'll end up going, how is Sullivan doing this? <laughs> It'll probably drive you. His system is amazing. It doesn't get enough credit. Okay, that's enough gloating about Sullivan. He's a fantastic coach. Okay, uh, next we have the Washington Capitals. That's right. I have the Washington Capitals missing the playoffs this year. And again, back to defense. I don't like uh, Dmitry Orloff and Carlson. John Carlson, his offense makes up for his defensive shortcomings. Not too worried about that. Uh, I think he also plays a little better defensively than people give him credit for. He's not an absolute disaster back there. But, I mean, he can only do as much. He, he, at 6'3", 217, you like to see him be able to use his body more. The guy just can't get his head programmed to anything but offense. And he's just damn good at it. So... Uh, Dmitry Orlov has become more of a defensive guy as he's gotten older, and he's okay. I, I don't know. I think ultimately, I, I don't. You don't really want Dmitry Orlov in your top pairing anymore, but he is there. And the next problem is the next two, Kempney and Schultz are five are five six defensemen. On most on a really good team, they're not playing in the three four spot. Uh, Martin for heavy for 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 Harvey actually could eventually take that spot. I liked him when I saw him up there. So I'm going to be really interested to watch for Her Harvey uh, this year become, see what he becomes. Because uh, the times that I've seen him up with the Washington, I have kind of liked him. And I wouldn't be surprised if he took Michael Kempney out of that spot. Nick Jensen won't do that, however. Nick Jensen wouldn't be on the roster on most teams. On a lot of teams. Any good team, not likely, Jensen. Just go down like maybe Detroit, you know, a couple guy teams like that, Arizona. But on a good team like Colorado, not a chance. Guys like uh, Tampa Bay, Carolina, nope, nope, nope. Like that's a – it's a very shallow defense core for Washington, and that's the reason why – I have them missing the playoffs. Not to mention, Ilya Samsonov has got it. He has, I don't know what it is. Sometimes he looks like he could just take on the world, but you don't see it enough. And part of that might be because the defense is pretty poor there. And I am not a VTech Banachek guy. I don't think he's, I think he's a backup maybe, but uh, certainly not a 1B really. He's just a backup. So that's what I, I'm not really fond of of having a guy like Vanacek, who I find to be weak, playing with Ilya Samsonov, who struggles with confidence and injuries. It's not a good combination for me. Uh, Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, and Tom Wilson. Awesome if Kuznetsov can turn his head around. Like, there was obvious problems in that room. This is not a team that is very strict okay you saw the way they partied after they won in the won with the cup and they they you know they like to have fun and enjoy life alex ovechkin is that is sort of the ringleader in that so for evgeny kuznetsov to get basically shamed and possibly you know threatened to be traded because of his actions tells me his actions were like yeah this is not a strict team and your actions are doing that Whatever they are, you know, you know what happened with Kuznetsov. So I hope he's okay first. I hope he's going down the right path now, back to where he needs to be. If he is, I'll give Washington a little more chance to make the playoffs here. But um, then Backstrom is hurt, I take it. Uh, yes. Week to week, probably come back. He'll play in that spot there with Nanta and Sprung. Uh, now, maybe they'll put Kuznetsov here, but I think for now they're trying to have Kuznetsov play with some really solid players to build build himself back up again. But that line, I mean, Sprong had a good year last year. Would I say that he's a solid second liner? No. Anthony Manta is very inconsistent, doesn't play his size. That's the reason why Detroit let him go, and now we got to change him at 27 years old. It's not the greatest second line in the world, man. To me, anyways. Tell me what you think there, guys. Uh, and then Eller would come down, and, unless Connor Michaels, uh, Michael, McMichael really crushes it, which I think he's still going to need another year of AHL. Uh, you'll have Shiri, um, Eller, and Oshi. 
I think that'll change. Sprong will come down. You, the thing is, you can't really put Sprong in, in that third-line role. Like playing with Eller, he's not that type of player. So I kind of see why they have Oshi here. You might as well. Oshi can play defense a lot better than people think. Certainly better than Daniel Sprong. And he can add some offense to the third line. So maybe they do keep it like that. Then Haglin, Dowd, and Hathaway. Good fourth line. But overall, I find this team to be, of course, getting older, getting pretty ripe in age, and uh, getting pretty thin, getting pretty thin, especially on defense. So That's why I have them missing the playoffs. And uh, the uh, environment has them in fifth, which brings me to New Jersey, who I have in fifth. I think that they could actually make the playoffs. If this is so tight in here, I'm putting them fifth just simply because the the teams ahead of them are just a little more veteran. But I think this team can really surprise. Uh, the uh, Tatar, Hughes, Sherrod Govich, they brought a little bit of veteran. I don't know if you call it leadership, but it's a veteran to help out Jack Hughes and Igor Sharon Govich, who... Last year was on a 25-goal pace-ish and could certainly get better yet, especially since I think Jack Hughes is probably bulked up quite a bit. And I love him. Man. I love the way that guy skates around in the neutral zone. His passes are beautiful. I think he's going to have a great year. And Tatar and Sharon Govich will probably, if they keep it like this, will probably get the best, you know, the, the spoils of that. Uh, Pavel Zaka with Nico Hischer and Jesper Bratt. When you look at Pavel Zaka had his first really decent year last year offensively. I think that's just going to get better. I like him a lot. I like his game. He's worked on his game hard. From when they drafted him in 2015, people were getting a little worried. But he's a big body guy. And he got better every year. Plays physical. Uh, they need that in New Jersey because they don't have too many physical guys. He's not like overly physical, but he plays Somewhat physical. Uh, Nico Heischer and Jesper Bratt. Jesper Bratt could have a crushing year this year. Uh, and Nico Heischer coming back from injury, I imagine. We'll see. He's had a lot of injuries. I'm not sure. But I think Jesper Bratt and Zaka could have really good years. They're right around that age. 23-24 is quite often when players have these huge breakout years. And New Jersey has tons of them in that area. Miles Wood. I don't know what's going on with Miles Wood. I heard he was. They were th- talking again about moving him. I don't know if it's contract. Possibly he could be asking for a lot of money, um, or what it is. But I really like his game. I hope they don't. They need guys like that. Uh, the other thing that could be is that um, where uh, we'll t- uh, where is it? Mercer. Mercer might be really making a, a, a push here to make this lineup. And that would push Miles Wood out a little bit, I would think. Uh, I would think more Andreas Johansson, though. Andreas Johansson is a utility guy that can play all over your lineup but doesn't do anything great. He's one of those guys that you know, you know, know, can do everything master of none type guy. So I would say, say he's the one that's going to be pushed out. But... Wood, McLeod, and Kalkinen, not bad at all. Um, that is so. That is a lot of depth. Kalkinen is underrated defensively. Michael McLeod has reached that point now where I think he's a solid third-line center this year. And then, of course, we just talked about Miles Wood, who plays a great two-way game. All of them can put up offense. Deep offensive line here. It's starting to really – this lineup is starting to flirt and blow. Try and – starting to bloom into one that's going to be very significant in the near future, maybe even this year. Andreas Johansson, Jesper Boquist, and Marion Studnik. I don't know what that line's going to look like. There's a lot of growth things that can happen here. I think it's kind of experimental. It may turn out okay. Uh, Defense, now way better. Graves and Hamilton, beautiful. Love that combination. And love the pickups, too. $9 million for Hamilton, we'll see. But I'm just going by the fact he's on the roster. 
he was uh, he was picked as a Norse candidate quite a bit uh, by some very intelligent people. So uh, offense won't be a problem. Ty Smith and P.K. Subban, I don't know who's playing defense with that pairing, but Ty Smith isn't terrible, terrible. Um, it should be fun to watch. I think it just feels like a fun defensive pairing to watch. I want to see what happens there. Uh, and Jogan, see the, uh, Siegenthaler and Severson. I have a feeling it's going to be like Siegenthaler and Subban and Severson and Ty Smith. Just for so you have an offensive guy and a more defensive guy combination. I think that's I think this is sort of an experiment that probably won't fly once the regular season gets started. But my favorite part, and the reason why I really and one of the biggest reasons why I think that New Jersey could make it this year, the pickup of Jonathan Bernier. Jonathan Bernier, the last two years in Detroit, has been absolutely spectacular. He could take McKenzie. The, he could take it away from McKenzie Blackwood. I really do believe he could take the number one away this year. I could even see it, and you hear it this first. Here's a bold prediction: Jonathan Bernier's in the Vesna conversation come the end of the year. He didn't have a defense in Detroit, and the guy would stop pucks like freaking mad. Now he's got a little bit of a defense in New Jersey. Uh, I think. I think he could. I think he could. We'll see. Um, besides that. Uh, you have T Tice Thompson, all the AJ Greer. I'd like to see him take a step up, big body guy. Uh, and then they picked up Mason Geertsen to beat people up. <laughs> but Nolan Foot uh, can play, should be ready a little bit more to play this year. Alexander Holtz will probably go down to the minors. Dawson Mercer is there. He may enter into the lineup as of yet. They got a lot of exciting guys there in training camp that may end up going down the minors that can fill in holes. Nice little pickup by Mark Jankowski. He's not spectacular, but he's certainly a good call-up guy. Defensively, that might where you don't want to see injuries on defense. I don't think Kevin Ball is ready. Could be wrong. Um, Christian Jaros is, oh, like, you can put him in there. He's so soft for his size, but he can play. Colton White can fill in a spot. But not for a long time. Like they're not superb on defensive depth yet, but they're getting better. Anyways, I got them fifth. Next, Philadelphia Flyers. And the community had the Philadelphia Flyers in this spot as well. And basically the reason why was because they had such a bad year last year. There's a whole bunch of new players coming in here to gel and everything and I think we both, the community and I, which I'm part of the community, <laughs> uh, of course, um, think that this they could go either way. If Carter, Carter, it's all about Carter Hart. I haven't been hearing things in preseason. Like I'm a Philadelphia Flyers fan, by the way, uh, in the East, uh, Philadelphia and Carolina, and I haven't been hearing. Like, oh, Carter Hart looks really good and stuff like that from the community over there. And we're part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network that started out as a Flyers website, but is actually an all sports website. So I talked to a lot of Flyers fans and I haven't been hearing like huge endorsements, which is wor worrisome. But if he does come back and it's only preseason, so you don't put too much stock into it. But if he does come back and crush it, pretty sure they'll at least be a bubble team. If not, that uh, could be big trouble again. Um, they have a lot of injuries already with uh, Kevin Hayes and Wade Allison. Uh, in Wade Allison is a high ankle sprain, and it doesn't look good. He's not going to be back for a while, which is really crappy because I liked his game and I wanted to see him progress. But And uh, Kevin Hayes could be two months. This So this lineup kind of looks like this, and this is where it gets a little worrisome. Giroux, Couturier, and Konechny. I think they'll pro they'll go with Konechny or Atkinson back and forth to see who works there. Van Riemsdyk, Morgan Frost. He ends up turning out, besides Carter Hart, being the most important player for this team. Uh, as if he can, he he's gained twenty pounds. They've been waiting on him a long time. This is the year. He's got to crush it this year. If he doesn't, 
things could get dicey in Philadelphia offensively. Because besides that, you have Derek Broussard and uh, Van Riebsdyk really needs somebody to feed off of to be able to get to the net. I do love Joel Farabee, though. Besides that, if they had that uh, Hayes back, I'm a lot more confident, but I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned without Hayes. Lindblom is this year. Could he come back from cancer? It's, this, it's been a year now. Can he crush it back again to the 2025 goal mark? Uh, Derek Broussard, serviceable guy that can pass the puck well. I wouldn't really like him in my third spot, but they don't have much of a choice with Hayes being out. And uh, again, we have Atkinson here, who the energy should be changing for Atkinson now that he's out of Columbus. I think he's going to bring a, I think he's going to have a good year. Lot, Scott Lawton, Thompson, and uh, Kobe, Obey Kobel, pretty good fourth line, especially Scott Lawton. That, that's pretty good depth there in the fourth line. As far as defense, the top two, no worries about. Proveroff and Ellis, beautiful. Beautiful. Nice pickup of Ellis. Uh, cost you cost the Myers, but getting Ryan Ellis at 30 years old, I think, is pretty fantastic. Um, Sanheim and Ristolainen could be fun. Ristolainen has a lot of growing to do. Uh, still at 26 years old, uh, learning when to pinch, when to hit, when to all of those sort of things like that, and I got to see it before I'm really confident. He could figure it out in Philadelphia fast. I'm just not sold on it yet. I think it's going to take a while, and unfortunately, it was a one-year. He's a, in, in another year, he's a UFA. So they got to re-sign him again. I don't know. This should be interesting. Uh, this, it's the most interesting part. If Rasmus Ristolainen can turn it around, it's not too bad. But then you got Yandel and Braun. If there's injuries, this team is in trouble. You don't want Keith Yandel to be playing in your top four anymore at this stage of his career. He just cannot play defense. With this this combination of Yandel and Braun, we'll have Braun looking around going, where's Yandel a lot? And, you know, it's just watch, Philadelphia Flyers fans. Sorry to tell you. Uh, a good. That's why it's so important that Carter Hart crushes it. And if Martin Jones can be a, a decent backup, that would go a long way. I think Cam York's going to take this spot, though. And that's the one that has me thinking that maybe they can make the playoffs this year. Cam York. I love that guy. Love, love, love. As far as depth is concerned, they had lots of it. They have lots of it once Hayes and Allison comes back. But before, until then, it's a little iffy. Uh, Gerald Mayhew has never been able to make a significant run in the NHL. Uh, Jackson Cates is probably, you know, is okay. It's like a whole bunch of okays. They can fill in spots, but you wouldn't want to do it for a very long time. And that includes defense besides Igor Zamula. Zamula will probably get a lot of ice time this year, more than last year. Uh, besides that, though, Adam Clendenning and Mason Millman, and it's not much. That's Injuries could kill this team, I think. Injuries could really kill this team. Next, New York Islanders. That's right. I have the Islanders third. I know everybody's taking the Islanders to be first this year. Uh, a lot of people are. Uh, uh, unfortunately, but we'll get – not the community, though. <laughs> The community didn't take him first either, but almost everybody else I'm talking to. I don't know. The people on my live stream didn't. Um, but I think they're a great team, though. And just the reason why I take them third is they're not really a – they're not built for the regular season. They're built for the playoffs. I still think they can win the Cup. But they'll probably end up being like third, second, something like that. Um, they just play a very defensive game in the playoffs, and they can get outscored. Uh, or in the regular season, I should say, and they they can, and also they have very little depth. Still, they don't have too many guys that can actually fill in a role comfortably. Um, a little more this year, if uh, Del Cole can step it up one more notch. I don't think Kiefer Bell is going to play. Honestly, I really don't. Ross Johnston can, you know. He's six foot five, two thirty-five. He hurts people. 
Um, they can play him a little bit. And Andreoff always comes up and tries his butt off when he's in there. No, they got guys that can fill him. Just I wouldn't want him for a long term at any real position. Uh, and then defense, it's a, it's even more trouble. Sebastian Ajo, no. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm just not an Ajo guy. I don't think he's ever going to make it, really. Um, so, and there's not much else. I don't know what Robin Salo is doing now. Um, I, I, I know he was a second-round pick. He's right around that age, but I haven't heard anything about him. Paul Adu never was able to make it in the NHL. There's just not much here. Uh, and that's always been the problem. So they end up playing their main guys a lot and not giving them too many breaks, and they tend to fall out at the end of the year a little bit. They start resting guys, and the team, and they start losing their their momentum they built early. They usually get up early and fall, and I think that'll happen again this year into third. And then they'll crush it in the playoffs like they always do. Uh, hopefully for their sake, they will uh, be able to beat Tampa this year if, if they actually have to play them. But bringing Palmieri, we'll see what his regular season is like. He didn't play all that well in the regular season last year. But again, it was at the end of the uh, – he was playing with the Islanders right at the end. And I think they were just like, take it easy. Save your energy. We're making the playoffs. They uh, so and, and they did had a pretty good playoffs last year. Um, Bovillier can step up more. I, I everybody loves Bovillier and for good reason. Uh, uh, Josh Bailey, Nelson, and Bovillier. I think Wallstrom. I like Wallstrom up here in Palmyra down here. It, I think it's time for Wallstrom to get his opportunity to score a lot of goals, and I think he can do it. And then you can put uh, Parise, Paggio, and Palmieri line, the triple P line, just just to be able to say the PP line. The PPs. The P's line. I don't know, something like that. Just for that alone. But no, I think that line would work out really well. And then, of course, one of the best fourth lines in the league, it's uh, Martin Sezikin and Clutterbuck. As far as defense is concerned, um, it's better. Chara, I'm going to have fun watching that. Looks like they're going to play him three in the 4-5 four, four, spot. So he still does a good job in the defensive zone. I mean, he's still better than a lot of defensemen in the league at 44 years old, I think. Yeah, his skating isn't great, but his reach makes up for it like a lot. So you just pass it to uh, Chara and Mayfield. I, I, I think it would be better like, Give Noah Dobson a shot up here. A guy that can move the puck a little more myself, but we'll see. Uh, Palach and Pulak, one of the most underrated duos in the league still. I don't know how, but they still are underrated for some reason. Even underrated pay-wise. Look at their pay. 5.7 and 5 for a top two pairing? Beautiful. Um, and then I think Ilya Sorokin will take that number one role this year from Semyon Verlama. I love him. I think he's ready to do it, and he will do it. Um, that is the only reason. That's one of the reasons, though, that maybe they might be able to win it all this year. Sorokin, if they give him the full reins, that guy's got the talent to win games all by himself. So that could be the reason why how, a way they do it. Thomas Hickey is always there. But that's where we have him. I have him in third spot. The community had him second because I have the Rangers in the second spot. And I know this is a bit risky because the team is green. But I think Lafreniere is going to have a blistering season. The second half last year, he just got better and better and better. He's going to be stronger. I, I, his speed, everything. He reminds me of Le Cavalier, oddly enough, French-Canadian. If Le Cavalier was a left winger, I just really love this guy. And uh, they have him playing with Zabanajad and Crater. I'm not sure if I'm really into that. You got two shooters. Stick with Panarin and Zabanajad, I think. But uh, uh, I think they want to really give it a shot because if they, they can work together and uh, Chris uh, Kreider can um, work well, get the pucks out to them. That's really what his job would be in that line. And it works well. Man, look at the depth you've got now. you got Panarin, who can score from anywhere. 
Strom and Capo Caco, who I think is going to have a very good year last year. I don't know what everybody's getting on this kid for. 20 years old, he had 17 points in 48 games. There's nothing wrong with that, people. Nothing. That's good. I know he was a high draft pick, but that is what a high draft pick does. It, it, he's probably going to be a 50 to 60 point guy like Palat and score 30 goals. That's fine. <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. And he's big. This team is huge, by the way. Uh, Goudreau, Heidel, and Kratzoff. That'll be fun to watch. I think Heidel actually. Really, would you give the guy a shot to play up there with Panarin? I, I would love to see it. Bring Strom down here. Heidel up there. I, I like that better. But the, those three lines have the potential to be just dynamic. Goudreau playing that grindy style that he has, getting the puck out to guys like Heidel and Kravtsov. Uh, Kravtsov, um, big, solid, can-do-everything type line. I just... Top three lines, I think, have a potential to be absolutely unbelievable. And then Blay, uh, Blay, Rooney, and Reeves, that's a solid, solid, solid fourth line. I'm not sure about Reeves. I thought Reeves actually played a lot better than he did in Vegas last year. I was like, uh, when they first picked him up, I thought, oh, I think it was a good pickup, and somebody pointed out to me that his analytics were just absolutely disastrous. He's really lost a lot, so... He may not play as much as I thought. Um, but you've got Julian Goche who can still play there. Uh, Drayden Hunt. I mean, they can fill in a role. I think they've got some pretty decent depth. And McKeg, whenever McKeg's brought up to play, he does well. He doesn't hurt you at all. Um, so it's not too bad. Defense, I'm a little concerned about as far as depth is concerned. But their top four, I'm not concerned about at all. That's a beautiful top four. Lindgren, Fox, Miller, Truba. Yes, this... The green, they are green, but the skill level and uh, hockey sense and everything is off the charts with that top four. Uh, Nemeth and Lundqvist, I don't know enough about Lundqvist. I've mentioned that before, uh, uh, for, but from what I hear, he's really, really good. So it's good, probably going to end up being, and if these two can be ready, Schneider and Matthew Rob, uh, Robertson, then they are set. Yarmo Runin and looked actually pretty good last year when he was given an opportunity too. So could be some potential really good depth there. Could be trouble if they're not ready though. Next, the Carolina Hurricanes. Yes, we still are on the Carolina Hurricanes. Both the community and I took Carolina. Um, I We have a guy, Lorne. It's on our live stream, and he's really upset about the way they have the line set up. <laughs> There's no way Needle Needle Rider is going to be a top line left winger and all that kind of stuff like that. I think they're just playing around with the lines a bit here. But it's probably going to be Svechnikov, Aho, and I think Nietzsche. He thinks Tubo, but I think Nietzsche. And then, uh, which is beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. Svechnikov worked on his defense last year and did so very, very well. No, people don't, oh, he only got 42 points. He was a beast defensively last year, and he got 42 points. Now he can bring that offense into the game with the defensive play. And you've got Aho, who's the Selkie Trophy winner, or Selkie Trophy candidate, I should say. Martin Nietzsche is fantastic both ways, and they can all score points. One of the best, probably be the most underrated uh, first line in the league this year. Uh, it, maybe not underrated anymore. If they go that way. Uh, then I would say Kokini I mean, they got to give him a chance to play up there. Uh, Kokini Emi, Trocek, and Tuvo. What, uh, let's do that. And then Niederreiter, Stall, and Fast. Good third line. Solid. Solid second line. Super solid. Excellent third line. Martinick, Stepan, and Levo. Nothing wrong with that for a fourth line. Their top 12 is one of the best in the league. Love it. Defense, we know the Hamilton left, that's going to hurt. It is going to hurt. But you just watch what Ethan Bear does in Carolina. The Oilers made a, another mistake. They just throw young defensemen away like they're nothing. Petrie, Schultz, Schultz, you know, over and over and over again they do it. And I think they made a big mistake here. And look, they're playing in the top two already. It's preseason. 
But if he, I would not be surprised if he ends up staying there with Slavin. Would not be surprised at all. Shea and Pesci, great shutdown pairing. Uh, although Shea's defensive numbers don't actually look all that great. Um, he's more of an offensive guy that doesn't put up a lot of offense. Um, but for some reason, I like him anyways. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I think Anthony D'Angelo will do very, very well this year. Uh, playing with Ian Cole, a good veteran guy to keep him in check. And they also brought in uh, uh, the talk. If you think D'Angelo's not going to do well because of what happened with the Rangers last year, I don't know exactly what happened. But I do know Carolina brought in a whole lot of Rangers. Derek Stepan, Jesper Faust. Uh, who else was there? Uh, Brady Shea and Ranta. And they all played with Anti Ranta, which we'll get to in a second with their goaltending, which uh, um, get their goaltending. But I'm sure they consulted with these guys before they made the deal. And quite obviously, they all said, no, bring him in. He's got lots of talent. I think they overreacted or whatever, or whatever they said, whatever it was. They didn't say, no, stay away from this guy. You don't want him or anything like that. Or they probably wouldn't be here. So it's an awesome point producer. Very, very good point producer. Hopefully, I, I think he's going to do all do good in Carolina, playing on the power play and replace some of those points that they lost in Hamilton. This is the big question mark for me. I'm banking that they know something uh, with Frederick Anderson and he's not he's going to be healthy after having struggles the last two years with his health. And I suppose with Ranta as well, I, even more so, because Ranta just couldn't play more than five games without being injured last year, it seemed. Um, so they must know something. If either one of them are at 100% and play as good as they can, Carolina wins this division. If they both are injured all the time, then you've got to rethink because there's not much after that. Lion, you know. But as far as forward depth, like if injuries happen, they got lots. Jarvis probably would like to get bigger, but if they need to, they could use him. Ryan Suzuki is probably close to ready. Jack Drury is probably what he'll always be. Maybe hopefully he bulks up a little more. But all of them can come in and play very well if uh, they're sent to the minors. Uh, defense, Joey Keane, are they ever going to give this guy a shot? Uh, anyways, he's he, sh he can play. Jalen Chatfield played in uh, Vancouver. He filled in, didn't look totally out of place. Um, Eric Jelena and Maxim Lajo, they all can play. You don't want, nobody wants significant injuries, but all of them have played in the NHL and they can play without hurting you too bad. So, um, not bad, not bad depth, I would say. That's my full 42 boys and girls. That's all I have to give.